So a lot of the fast movies have director's cuts and extended cuts. When you're putting something like that together, what is your priority? Is it including things that you really wish that people got to see in the theatrical cut? Is it about enhancing the story? What's, what's the order of priorities there? It's different. I mean, I, you know, I think on Fast Five, it was about sound design. It was, it was really weird. I think in the evolution of like the, how you release a film, Fast Five, the extended cut, really, was, we had to remix that to the way I, I really wanted because there was MPAA, you know? And so that, that was the experience on that one. Um, on, on a lot of times, it, it's really for pacing. I think especially for this, the ambition of this film, you know, it was a collision of like so many different narratives. And I do feel like with time, F9 will be the film that's gonna connect not only the other films, but other stories in the universe, you know? And so um, that being said, I think the seven and a half minutes, it, it's not because I, I didn't like it and I took it out of the theatrical cut. It was just the theatrical cut was already two and a half hours. It was really more for pacing, but there's a lot more um, explanation and also kind of shared uh, 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 reasons for our characters when you watch it. And I think that, that again, down the line, when people want to watch like when it's all said and done and they want to watch to connect everything, the extended cut will be the one where it will answer more questions. I could feel it while I was watching it. So, you know, I have to look ahead because we're greedy. We love this franchise and I can't help it. I heard you're shooting the next two movies back to back and it was making me wonder what is something that's on your mind that could pose a significant challenge for you being the leader on two gigantic films shooting back to back. But then on the other side, what is something about shooting two films that way, especially the end of the saga that you think could benefit the material? <laughs> Look, the, 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 there's an ambition of what we want to do, and there's also uh, real world issues, you know, that, that we're, we're, we're encountering. But, you know, I, I, I feel like for, for me, it's, I, I don't want to be greedy. You know, I, I want to do what's best for, you know, the process. And so um, the idea of, of the, the last chapter being two films is correct. I, I, I have to say, I, 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 I'm so glad that, you know, because I think when I first entered this franchise, a, a sequel was not given. It, it, you had to earn it, you know? And so to be sitting here talking to you and go, oh yeah, we're gonna be, there's gonna be two more movies. I was like, wow, like it, it means a lot, you know? And so, um, so every day when I wake up, I'm trying to like reconfigure and make sure that hopefully whatever we're talking about process wise is gonna yield the best result, you know? And, um, but I think, you know, having one chapter and two movie is correct. That, that's where I sit today. I believe in you in that respect. So over the course of this movie's run, I've spoken to so many people and everybody highlights your attention to detail. So can you think of a specific Thing, whether it was a whole scene or a very tiny detail that people might not notice that you harped on in this movie that you want to make sure they see this time around? That is you. That is the toughest question. I, I, have, I had finished and wrapped this movie. I, 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 and, and if you would have just warned me, I would probably give you like <laughs> eight different examples. I get the sense there's like a laundry list of things. Yeah, and, and I mean, look, I think that's part of the fun I have doing these films is that, you know, I think with every actor talking through their character, like, narrative, and the, the tragedy is that 90% of what we talk about is not even on screen, you know? Um, but I think hopefully soon while we will find the right medium and the right uh, avenue to be able to bring those stories to life. But... Um, I enjoy it. I enjoy it. I enjoy every little thing. Um, and I think that that is the, to me, that's one of the secret ingredients is that, you know, sometimes doing these big movies to be able to show up on set and, um, God, oh man, I, there's so many, there's so many. But I'm drawing a, a little bit see, of a blank. Like maybe even like a, like a production design detail, uh, like a costume design element. <laughs> Well, it's funny, I, I, we were in London, and um, they are like, oh, so uh, Han Snack. And I said, oh, man, we got to get on it 
because it just can't be a regular snack. And uh, talking to Sung, I think they had to go, like, they had to import those crackers, you know? Um, and I was adamant. I was like, we cannot fake Han snacks. It doesn't matter. And so, because having worked with Sung, like, even the way he tosses it, you know, it had to be natural. So, like, I remember that was a big thing. That was, like, uh, one of those things where they, I think that even props were, at first, were like, oh, yeah, just snacking. I'm like, no, <laughs> no. So that, that was a great one. I like that. He just built a Han uh, food basket for me, and now yeah. I kind of want that to be a reality so yeah. I can buy it. 